Fish item seven, and also um, at uh, MPI for cognitive and uh, uh, human brain sciences. And I'm going to present uh, the results of my first PhD project, which is about the organization of laminar thickness covariance um, in the human cortex using big brain data. Um, so the isocortex is a layered structure. It consists of layers that are stacked on top of each other, and each of them have their own unique uh, microstructure and also function. Um, and they're usually just also described as sex. Um, now, what has been realized from the very early histological studies have been that this laminar structure is not uh, consistent across the global cortex, and it varies a lot. Um, and trying to characterize and describe this variation of uh, laminar structure across the cortex has been a, an important focus of the field uh, over the past century. Um, and here you can see two examples uh, that are nearly a century apart um, that have um, tried to describe these gradual and overall variations in laminar structure. Um, while these studies have been great in improving our understanding of, the, of this question, um, they have been mostly theory driven, meaning that uh, expert anatomists have looked at uh, samples of cortex and uh, looked at their laminar structure and tried to describe it and also categorize it into different types of cortical areas. Um, and another uh, sort of limitation of these studies have been that they have based, been based on data that has a low sampling rate that does not cover the whole brain. Um, and in this study, we aim to sort of uh, look at this century old uh, question of how laminar structure varies across the cortex uh, from a different point of view, um, using the whole brain data, which is the big brain data, and also using a mostly data driven approach that is not biased by theory. Um, so the data that we used was this uh, uh, map of big, big brain map of cortical layers that we know. Um, so you know, big brain is an ultra high resolution at, uh, atlas, 3D atlas of uh, uh, histology. And recently, Conrad Waxtel has uh, um, segmented the cortex of this uh, brain into, um, into the six layers. Um, and then this has been also transformed to the surface space. And in the end, we know for each cortical location, what is the thickness of each of these six layers? And this was the main input to our study. Um, so we had these six maps of thickness for each layer. And we first did some pre-processing on it. Um, we first excluded a granular and this granular regions. And these are mostly limbic regions that do not have a clear six layer structure. And the layer boundaries are a little bit hazy in these regions. So we removed them. Um, next, we applied a smoothing on the maps of these uh, layers, um, mainly to get rid of or to remove the local effects of curvature on, on laminar structure. So you've also heard this before on, in, uh, yesterday that uh, folding has a great influence on laminar structure. And this is also the case in, in big brain. And so as you can see uh, um, at the bottom, um, as you move, as, as we move towards the salsi, um, the more um, superficial layers get sort of bumpy or more uh, um, prominent. Uh, and also as you as we move along towards the gyroid, the more uh, deeper layers become more uh, prominent. And then if we apply a smoothing, as you can see here, most of this effect is removed. And then we also normalize the thickness by uh, total thickness at each location to get the relative thicknesses and then apply the parcellation. And in the end, we had the relative thickness of each of these six layers for each cortical area. Then we use this to create a matrix that we call laminar thickness covariance matrix. Um, and this matrix basically shows how similar is the laminar uh, thickness pattern of two given regions. Um, and then to better understand the structure underlying this matrix, we used diffusion embedding technique to get the map of, to get the main axis of laminar thickness variation in the cortex. And you can see this map here. So this is the main axis of variation in laminar thickness in, in big brain. And what it describes is basically a rostrocodal axis of variation in laminar thickness, which shows um, a transition from dominance of, of deeper layers in more uh, rostral frontal parts of the cortex towards a dominance of more superficial layers towards the back of the brain, towards uh, posterior regions. Um, so after describing this like uh, map of laminar variation using this data-driven approach, we were then interested in, in, in saying what is, so what is the functional relevance of this map? What, uh, what does it mean? Um, and recently, like not, not recently, like, uh, um, in, in, in many previous studies, mostly in animal uh, studies, it has been shown that um, as regions become more similar in their laminar structure and site architecture, 
they are more likely to connect and their connection is also stronger. So we aim to test this hypothesis on our data. And uh, so we use the structured connectivity matrix from the Enigma toolbox, which is based on a subsample of a ACP sample. Um, and then observe that um, as regions become more similar in the laminar structure, or as their laminar thickness covariance increases, um, they, they are more likely to connect. And if they are connected, the, the strength of their connectivity is also increased. So yeah, so we also observed this effect that was observed in previous animal studies also um, um, in humans. Um, another uh, important functional relevance of laminar structure is that, again, in, in previous, uh, mostly animal studies have been observed that um, difference of laminar structure between two regions relates to the laminar pattern and direction of their connectivity, whether it is feedback, feed forward or lateral. And it is, that is important for cortical hierarchy or the relative distance of these regions across cortical hierarchy. So variation of laminar thickness or laminar structure relates to cortical hierarchy. And we asked this, whether this is the case in humans using our data um, and whether variation of laminar thickness in big brain relates to uh, the map of cortical hierarchy. And to map cortical hierarchy, we use two approaches, one in humans, the other one in macaques. So in humans, what we used was this effective connectivity matrix based on resting state uh, uh, functional uh, imaging data um, and an approach called uh, uh, regression dynamical causal modeling, um, um, which basically describes um, how much each, each region influences the activity in other regions. Um, so we had this matrix and based on this matrix, which is based on also the mixed data set, uh, um, uh, we use this uh, effective connectivity matrix. And from that, we calculated the map, which we call a symmetry based hierarchy, which basically shows um, how much each region on average affects the activity in other regions. And as you can see here, like the green regions tend to more affect the activity in more pinkish regions. Um, and then we observed that this uh, map of hierarchy is highly correlated to our uh, map of the laminar thickness of variation. And specifically, as we move along towards the more frontal parts of the cortex, where deeper layers are more prominent, the hierarchy increases. And this makes a lot of sense because regions that have a higher level in hierarchy usually send, tend to uh, send more feedback connections. And these feedback connections usually originate from deeper layers. And deeper layers were the very layers that were thickened in these regions. Um, the alternative way of uh, mapping hierarchy we used was based on macaque cortex because it was based on this uh, uh, highly invasive approach of track tracing, which is only possible in animals. Um, and basically, I'm not going to go into the details, but um, using the pattern of, of feedback versus feed forward connections, um, and this map was. Uh, created previously in this publication by Bert and colleagues, um, based on the pattern of feedback and feed forward connections, it's possible to create a map of hierarchy um, based on how much each region sends more feedback connections versus how much it is more mostly feed forward. So regions that send more feedback connections get higher uh, hierarchical position and regions that tend to send more feed forward connections get lower um, hierarchy. Um, and then we had this map of hierarchy in macaque uh, and also our uh, map of laminar things variation in human. And to be able to compare them, we mapped the, uh, uh, the human map of uh, laminar things variation to the uh, macaque cortex um, using a mapping approach to, to, to their homologous regions in, in macaque. And then observed that these two were again um, correlated in a similar fashion to the other map of hierarchy. So using two maps of hierarchy, we showed that um, uh, um, laminar thickness variation relates to um, cortical hierarchy variation. Then after showing the functional relevance of, of, of the uh, laminar thickness variation, we asked, where does it come from? What is the, uh, what is the root of, of laminar thickness variation? And then the prevailing hypothesis of, of where does this variation of laminar structure in the cortex comes from is a developmental one. So, for example, there have been different mechanisms proposed. There may be that the regions with different laminar structure get uh, have different developmental trajectories, different timing in neurogenesis or other neurodevelopmental events. Um, and it's also possible that at different stages of development, there is selective layer and region-specific neural pruning, neural death, or synaptic pruning that causes these variations. 
Um, so we um, sort of uh, try to tackle this question um, by, from different perspectives. First, we asked whether agents that have similar laminar structure, do they have, do, are they affected by shared genetics and maturational effects? And to model shared maturational and genetics effects, we used a matrix which is called a structured covariance matrix, which basically shows between each pair of regions, how much these regions um, show similar inter-individual variability across population. The population here was the SCP sample. Um, and, and, and then uh, this could be interpreted as, as, as uh, how much two regions are affected by similar or shared genetics and maturational effects. Um, so we have this matrix from uh, this publication by Sophie Falk and observed that this matrix was uh, correlated to our matrix of laminar thickness correlation. So in other words, as two regions become more similar in the laminar thickness, they are also more structurally, structurally covariant across population. And therefore they are probably affected by shared maturation genetics effects. And we also showed this at uh, another level at the level of the main axes of these two, two different two uh, matrices, which basically shows the same. Um, we then asked, um, focusing on more genetics effects that ultimately leads to these, like provides a scaffold for these developmental uh, um, pathways um, and showed that um, two regions that have similar laminar structure or also, uh, also have a similar pattern of gene expression. And for gene expression, we use the Allen Human Brain Atlas data. Um, so uh, we created this matrix of correlated gene expression, which shows how much how similar are the gene expression between two regions. And observe that the, uh, as two regions become similar in their laminar structure, they also become similar in their gene expression. And then uh, we also asked whether genes that are expressed differentially at the two ends of this axis of laminar thickness uh, variation, um, do they have different developmental or spatiotemporal trajectories of gene expression variations? So specifically what we did was that we looked at the top 500 genes correlated to our axis of laminar thickness variation, uh, divided in, um, into positively correlated and negatively correlated. So we had a set of genes that are more enriched or more expressed at at the end of, of like at the rosal end and, and genes that are more uh, expressed at the more caudal end. And then observed that using brain span data to observe that these two sets of genes have differential uh, spatial temporal trajectories. So which sort of suggests, um, uh, provides suggestive evidence for this hypothesis that the uh, different in laminar structure probably arises because of differences in developmental trajectories of these regions. Um, so to sum up, um, we found a reciprocal axis of laminar thickness um, co-variation from um, rosal parts of the brain towards the back of the brain, which basically um, uh, describes a shift from deeper from uh, dominance of deeper layers towards superficial layers. Then we observed the uh, uh, looked at functional relevance of this axis and observed that this aligns with cortical hierarchy, which makes a lot of sense given the uh, laminar regularities of, of uh, feedback versus feedforward connections across cortical hierarchy. And then we also observe that two regions that are more similar in their laminar structure are also more strongly and more uh, likely to connect. And finally, we provided some evidence in favor of the uh, uh, idea that uh, laminar thickness similarity uh, uh, arises because of uh, similarity in, in maturational genetics effects. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks to my group, uh, to the quarters and to our partners. <laughs>